hey everybody, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Let's have a talk today about video editing in Photoshop CC. It's one of the things that not a lot of people talk about, but it is kind of a neat little aspect of Photoshop. And if you have Photoshop and nothing else, and you need to edit together a small video clip, you can do it. And there's actually a lot of cool things you can do with video. We're not going to do like a deep dive into video, but we are going to take you from zero to being able to produce a reasonably well produced small video here in Photoshop in a very short period of time. So I just have a new Photoshop document here. It is a 1080p, so 1920 by 1080, the size of your standard 1080p video frame. Uh, I don't need to create another new document. And we have what we have. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is go layer, video layers, new video layer from file. What this is going to do is basically say, hey, what video file would you like to import? Now, I actually have three video files I want to import, this 031, 032, and 033. So I'm going to import 031 to begin with. And you can see here that very, very quickly, the file just pops right into Photoshop. It's And it's not a tiny video file. It's not huge, but it's also not tiny. Let's go file, or I'm sorry, layer, video layers, new video layer from file. And we'll choose 032 and let this guy import itself in. And last but not least, we're going to go video layers, new video layer from file and 03-3. Now the idea behind what we're doing here as this final one imports and there you go it's that quick we're gonna sort of make this like an old school video we're gonna add some old school music behind it and sort of this retro sounding voiceover that I did for this little tutorial and it's gonna be fun we're gonna cut this together and just make a very short clip this is the uh, the SS United States it was abandoned and I mean not really abandoned but just dry docked and it's being cared for and I use that term very loosely but it's very expensive to keep here uh, it's in the docks right here uh, outside of Philadelphia or in Philadelphia I should say I'm going to alt double click on my background layer and delete that because we don't need that background layer. And let's shut off the top two video layers. Now, to begin working with video, we want to go window timeline and you can see here, this is going to open up our timeline panel. I'm going to drag this down to the bottom of the screen and allow it to click on right there and then I'll pull this up a little bit. You can see here we have our three video clips. They're all three video layers. I guess the first thing we should do is just trim this together really quickly. All I want to do is be able to, and by the way, you can zoom in on your video timeline here. There's the slider on the bottom. We can go ahead and grab that and just zoom in on the video a little bit. I want it to go from displaying this chunk of video to one of the others to one of the others. I'm not really going to be picky just because we'll, let's get through this quickly. So we're going to take this for maybe, I don't know, five or six seconds. And then we'll take one of the other clips for, you know, five or six seconds in the third clip. Same thing. Actually, before we start cutting this together, let's drag the voiceover soundtrack into here um, just because, well, we're going to need to make sure that the video is as long as the soundtrack. Everything else can be kind of fit to that. And to do that is actually pretty easy. We just over here on audio track, hit select it and choose add audio. And then we're going to navigate to where the audio is. And I have this SS United States voiceover dot wave file. Let's just double click to open that in Photoshop. And there we go. So we know we have... I don't know, about 25 or so seconds of uh, footage space to play with. So we're going to try to make this about that long. All right, so for the first clip, I'm just going to hover over the far right side of it and grab it and just drag it back, uh, drag it back to like here. And that's going to sort of cut that clip down. What I can then do is take layer two. I can drag it down here onto layer one. And you can see it becomes a video group layer. I'm going to drag that back a little bit and then I'm going to drag layer three over and down onto video uh, video group one click it into place and it just automatically is going to snap into place and bring this all the way here to uh, the end so now we have our, our, our sort of video all lined up where we want it and it's over our voiceover track. Now, one of the things that we're going to need to do because we know we're going to have some music behind it, and we're also obviously going to have the soundtrack, we want to strip the sound out of our original video tracks. Here's how you do that. You select the video track, you right click on it. You see you have a footage option and an audio option. Select the audio option and just choose to mute the audio. That's going to knock out. And there's like the conductor of our little boat. He was talking and explaining things about the boat. I don't want to hear that. All I want to do is hear the music and I want to hear uh, any sort of voice voiceover that we've added to make this like an old retro commercial or something. So we're going to mute the audio on all three of these clips. Right click, choose audio, and choose mute audio. Great. All right, uh, this little playhead here, I'm just going to slide it back here to the, to the middle so we can see an image and we can see what's going on here. Oh, that's right. The reason we're not seeing anything is, of course, because we shut those two layers off. So let's just make sure we have those layers turned on and everything will flow nicely. Now, before we go and make this footage look like 
old school vintage footage, we need to fade these clips together. Well, we don't need to. It's actually really crossfades are becoming a thing of the past, I think at least. But we do have the capability of adding a crossfade. And I'm just going to show you guys in case you want to do it. There's this little half black, half white box here. You can click on that and choose a fade, a crossfade, fade with black, fade with white, or fade with a specific color and then how long you would like the fade to last, you can just go and grab, we're going to grab a crossfade, drag it and drop it on that transition, then we're going to drag and drop one on this transition. Now you can see that what that's doing is it eats up some of the video. So let's just pull this last video clip out a little bit further to meet up here with the end of our um, with the end of our, uh, our, our little sound clip here. There we go. So we just straighten that out. We have our crossfades and you can play around with your crossfades as well by just dragging the clip. You can see we sort of started dragging that clip first and it made the crossfade a little bit faster. So maybe if we select layer two and just drag it a little bit, we can sort of even out our crossfades a little bit. It's kind of like a quick dirty way of moving your video clips around and adjusting those crossfades. And sure enough here, if we just play the, vid the video may have to render a little bit. And what you hear there is just this audio. So maybe let me pause it and let's just let's mute this audio temporarily um, let's try that again we're gonna go ahead and just play that and you can see we get a nice little crossfade and when we get to the second spot here you can just click your playhead through you can see we get another crossfade so that's all pretty cool so we've lined up our clips we've cut them down we've added our crossfades we've added a voiceover track underneath now what we need to do is make this footage look like vintage uh, footage and we're going to do that by using adjustment layers so we have our video group over here in our layers panel we can begin to add adjustment layers above that so we're going to begin with a gradient map adjustment layer black to white gradient is great I'm actually going to open the gradient editor and I want this to be a very low contrast black and white so I'm going to select the black color stop and I'm going to make it sort of a you know a very a dark gray I guess essentially but something that's very uh, quite a bit brighter than solid black and I'm going to go to the white as well and just make it a very light gray Hit OK. Maybe this gray is a little bit too bright. Make it a touch darker, add a little bit more contrast. There we go. Great. You can hit OK. Now we could add like a noise layer above this to make it even more dirty and grungy. And maybe we will. I don't know. But one of the things I do want to do is add a photo filter and just pump up. We're going to choose color and I'm going to choose kind of a light and dirty sort of brownish orange color. And I'm going to increase the density quite a bit to give it like this dirty low contrast just film that's been sitting somewhere getting dirty for a long time kind of look. Um, and, you know, we're not going to add any grain to it because we just, we're just not going to. Um, so we've got our two adjustment layers and we've now successfully converted our video footage to this sepia vintagey looking video footage very, very quickly just using these adjustment layers. And of course, if we shut the adjustment layers off, we can see there was our footage right out of the camera. And there is our footage once we've applied these filters to it. So the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and add a music track. So let's add, and I'm moving off screen a little bit, so I'm going to pull the timeline up here. If I select here, I can choose add audio. We've already added audio to this track, so let's choose to add a new audio track. We've got a second audio track, and to this, let's add some audio. So I have here in this file a music track, and we also have a sort of 35 millimeter film sound, which might be cool to add to the beating. Let's actually add that first. So we're just going to double click that to open it. And you can see it's going to give us just this neat, just film projector starting off sound. It's a cool little uh, track to have down there. If we play this, you can hear it's just, it's kind of an interesting sound, but obviously, and actually I'll leave the, the audio up since we're beginning our audio editing portion here it's far, far, far too loud. So again, what we'll do is we'll right click on this and we can choose to adjust the volume. So we'll just knock the volume down to like 20, 25% and maybe even fade that sound in for a, a second or two at the very beginning. So let's just take this back to the beginning and see what it sounds like. You can hear it just revs right up. Now, one of the things we might want to do is sort of fade it out over the course of a few seconds because you can see, obviously, that sound does not continue all the way through to the end of the clip. So, again, right-click, and let's just choose to fade this out over the course of, like, I don't know, almost five seconds. So, it's just very, very gradual, and beginning at, you know, like, over here about the seven or eight-second mark, it'll just fade out slowly and gently until it just sort of fades, you know, and all you hear is going to be the voiceover and the music anyway. So, let's add another audio track, new audio track, and to this audio track, we're going to add some music. We're going to add audio. And again, here we have this 8 Blues MP3. And this MP3, and now I can drag the timeline back down here. We've got our Blues track all the way down here at the bottom. Oh, what we need to do, though, is cut that Blues track off uh, right here. So I can actually zoom out and we can see the entirety of 
our our adjustment layers, which are going to go on as long as the longest piece goes on, unless, of course, we just scale them back, which we'll do just for the sake of keeping things clean here. One of the other things we can do is if we drag the playhead here to the end of our video, we can choose to cut the music. So we can select the music and choose the little scissors icon. It's going to slice the music wherever the playhead is. And we can just grab the second part of the, the blues transition music here. Right, we can grab that and we can just hit the delete key and delete that. Now, I do need to drag it just a touch to get it back to the end the way it was, and great. So now it's going to be a matter of unmuting the voiceover and mixing it properly with the music, the film projector, and the voiceover. So let's just start this at the beginning and see what it sounds like. Now, right off the bat, the music is way, way, way too loud. So let's right click on that music track and reduce the audio. Uh, down to like 30, 35%, maybe something like that. Let's try it again, see what it sounds like. And that's and that's probably that's probably headed much more toward what we're looking for, I guess are the words I'm searching for. Reduce the volume of the music, we reduce the volume of that film projector. Let's see what it sounds like as it fades out. So at this point, obviously, the film projector has completely stopped, and we would just have that voiceover and just have the music uh, playing as well. So at this point, we have our little film set up, and it's time for us to go ahead and export this as a as an M, uh, an MP4 or a .mov file or whatever. So the, well, the first thing, and one of the very very important things, is going to be your little double playheads here. And I know we've been referring to this as a playhead. These are sort of like project selector playheads, if you will. This is where your project begins. This is where your project ends. If you drag this back to like right here, when we go and export this file, you can choose to only export the area contained within these two playheads, which would mean that we would just export that chunk of this file. I want to export the whole thing. And actually, maybe what we should do is add a fade to black to the end of this. Let's do that. Let's go fade to black and just add it to the end of the video project. So as this thing goes out, it just fades to black. And probably we should also add uh, fade out sound to, uh, whoops, we don't use that. We right click on this and choose to fade the sound out by just a few seconds. So maybe 2.95 is cool. Oh, you know what? Actually, let me undo that. Let's right click. We're going to fade out the voice only a very, very tiny bit, less than a second right at the end, because remember the voice, we want to hear what's going on. The music, on the other hand, we can choose to fade that out over a second or two. So a little two and a half seconds. That's great. All right. So we have our whole project selected. Let's get on track here. Now we can go file, export, and choose to render our video. You can also, I believe, render the video. If you click on the little flyout menu here and choose render video, that works as well. And when we choose to render the video, we get the render video dialog box where you name your file. Um, I'm just going to name this uh, SSUS because it's the, the SS United States. I'm going to select the folder and just we'll just save it to the desktop. Go ahead and that's, that's fine. And then comes the time to choose the codec and everything that you're going to do as far as actually exporting the video. I'm just going to use Adobe Media Encoder. I don't I don't want to use an image sequence. I want this to be a real deal video. I'm going to stick with the H.264 format. That's going to give me, it's just a great format. It, just generally speaking, a great format. And they have a preset here for YouTube HD videos at 1080p, 29.97 frames per second. I'm going to roll with that. Although the Vimeo one is great too. I think they actually have the YouTube one set to a slightly higher quality. So I'm going to roll with YouTube. And then, of course, you can choose your document size. You can change the frame rate, all kinds of things like that. I don't really recommend you do that. Um, just kind of roll with what your document is unless you really know what you're doing and decide, yes, I actually do need to cut this video down or, or resize the video, I'm sorry, uh, in some sort of way. I'm going to keep color manage checked on because it's just Photoshop rendering video. I'm going to let it be smart and do its thing. Again, this would never be for some huge production. This is just a small little project we're throwing together. And then comes the range. What part of your project would you like to export? Do you have a specific uh, number of frames that you want to export, like frames 1 through 150? You could do that. The work area, as I mentioned before, that's this area that we've selected with these double handles, all right? And I'm going to leave that selected, but also know that you can just go all frames and it's going to export the entire project. I like to stick with work area just because sometimes you do have video assets that are running way off here to the right and you don't really want to... Um, 
you don't want to have to trim them down or go through you know 20 different video layers and adjust them all or whatever work area just allows you to select one nice chunk boom and that's what's going to be uh, rendered out so go ahead and hit the render button and Photoshop is going to just kind of plow through this render it's going to export this video this is a 25 second video so it's going to take a few seconds to render out uh, and then we'll go ahead and check the video out and see if it turned out the way that we wanted it to turn out and what I'll do here is I will I'll overlay this video with the finished video so you can check it out and see that it turned out great um, but that's it for this one so for video editing in Photoshop CC and all of the great things you can do here with the timeline panel and adjustment layers and sound editing and and crossfades and all this other crazy stuff that's it get it got it good Nathaniel Dodson Tutfid.com I'll catch you in the next one here she is, the SS United States, the most majestic luxury passenger liner you've ever seen. She was built in 1952 for United States lines and was designed with dreams of capturing the transatlantic speed record. She is the largest ocean liner constructed in the U.S. and will be the fastest ocean liner to cross the Atlantic in either direction. Her maiden voyage will be from New York Harbor to Bishop Rock outside of Cornwall, England, in summer of 1952. Somebody better call the police because we just murdered that tutorial. Go ahead and hit the like button and show your support. Also, subscribe to this channel, head over to tutvid.com, use the link in this video and sign up for the newsletter to get 30 free, time-saving, powerful features, tips and tricks for using Photoshop. And also follow me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat. You will not regret it. Do I hear the police?